it's Mari McInerney uh, from Crokey here and I'm talking to Verinda Eden and we're at uh, the Vimeac in all the Consumer Awards. Verinda, can you tell me first your background? You are the chair of the Vimeac board. Um, yes. Can you just give me a little bit about your background? Um, sure. I uh, have been a consumer worker, so that's basically a consumer is someone who uses mental health services. It's the way that we identify rather than patients or um, clients. Um, so I've, I've been a consumer worker for nearly 20 years now, worked as a consumer consultant in services, uh, then managed a small um, team of consumer and family carer workers. And in the last two years, I've been working in research at Monash University, so I'm a consumer academic, if you like. Um, what areas have you been looking at? Uh, principally, I've uh, been involved in a research project that is looking at recovery and um, recovery-oriented practice and how we might teach um, staff in services to undertake their work in a recovery-oriented way. For those who don't know, what is recovery-oriented approach? So uh, for a long time, people who had a diagnosis of mental illness were basically told to you know, go home, drink coffee, smoke cigarettes, they'll never have a job, they wouldn't be able to get married, they wouldn't be able to have children, um, all those sorts of things. So there's st and there is still a lot of um, misunderstanding about what the um, implication of having the diagnosis of a mental illness is. Uh, so a recovery-oriented um, approach to working with people with a diagnosis is about actually um, working with things like hope um, and meaning and empowerment and really pushing people to be all that they could be. Uh, some people talk about um, having a contributing life um, and some people talk about it being work, some people it's about being education and for some people it's just about you know having a nice life but it's working with the staff to direct their, their work with individuals in that direction. So speaking of work, the awards tonight are marking actually the 20th anniversary since the beginning of the Consumer Mental Health Workforce Year. Really. So what happened then? What changed? Um, there was a project, a research project that actually happened in the early 1990s called the Understanding and Involvement Project. Um, people usually refer to it as the UNI project, uh, which is a nice little, um, I mean, that little yeah. sort of change. Um, it was at Royal Park Psychiatric Hospital and it was looking at how do does this, the hospital involve consumers in decision making. Um, it was a project that went for about three years and they one of the recommendations they had was to develop some roles that in the initial phases they were calling staff consumer um, collaboration consultants, but it sort of got shortened to consumer consultants. But that was where the, um, the idea for consumer consultants actually started, was in that project. Mm. And how far have we come then in 20 years? What are we celebrating? Here um, so th there's been a lot of um, changes in the way that the workforce um, works. Uh, what we have now is a... Uh, a in 1996, when services were first given money to employ consumer consultants, um, it was only adult um, mental health services, clinical mental health services that had consumer workers. Um, and over the 20 years, what we're seeing is a real growth in that. So we now have um, family carer consultants as well as consumer consultants. We have um, consumer consultants in youth services and child services. We have um, peer support workers. and particularly in the community setting, so um, in organisations like Mind Australia, um, Wellways, which used to be called uh, My Fellowship, those sorts of very big community mental health services, they are actually using a lot of peer support workers. Mm. So um, that's an extraordinary growth in the workforce in that time. And what, do, what have they brought to the, the system? What have they brought to the system? These are such big questions and it's really, it's really hard to sort of pick down one, one thing. I think that um, there's, still, um, there's still a long way to go. We've still got um, many consumers would uh, still experience discrimination um, and stigma and a lot of that is actually still in our health services, particularly our clinical health services. Uh, but what we have managed to change is um, the idea that, uh, that consumers can have more, um, more contributing lives, that they can actually achieve a whole lot more in their life than um, what, what they used to. We've made, we were 
the consumers and the way that consumers have worked over the 20 years, um, I believe were really significant in the changes to the Mental Health Act. So we have got a new Mental Health Act in 2014, which is based in um, a recovery-oriented practice approach. It's, it has a lot of um, uh, alignment with the um, CRPD, the Convention of the Rights of People with a Disability. Um, it talks about supported decision making rather than um, compulsory treating people and things like that. So the consumer workforce has, has overall contributed really substantially to some quite significant changes like that. Now the Victorian Government I know, has a sort of commitment to growing the consumer workforce. What do you need to actually make that start to happen? And do you have targets? I've heard people talk of you know, 50 per cent. Um, yeah. Are there targets and what do you need to get um, to boost? The, as far as I know, no service or organisation has officially um, said that they're going to have a target. Um, I think that where my position's been that um, we should be looking more at positive discrimination um, in, and not positive, no sorry, that's the wrong words. I actually mean um, affirmative action. Um, so looking at where you've got someone uh, two people with the with the right skills um, and experience to do the job. If someone declares that they have a mental illness, they should get the job over the person that doesn't. Um, in, and that, I'm talking about in services there. Um, the department has committed in the um, 10 year plan to supporting the consumer workforce. Um, they have uh, recently um, implemented a new program called the Expanding um, Post-Discharge Support Program, which will employ peer support workers officially for the first time in clinical services, so that's quite extraordinary. Um, and there's, there's uh, 60 EFT um, that will be employed in clinical services over the next uh, two to three months. So that's a really significant investment um, on behalf of the government. Um, what we need to make sure that that actually works is also some infrastructure to support that um, workforce because it's rapidly growing. Um, we don't have enough infrastructure to support the workforce. We don't have enough um, uh, consumers who are, have the experience, education and support themselves to supervise that workforce. Um, so what infrastructure, what do you mean by that? Uh, so mean? things like having um, training, um, these, uh, until uh, a group of us intervened with the department, these um, workers were just going to be employed and start working um, with no training, with no supports. Uh, we did manage to work with the department to stop that. So the department um, has funded training uh, that's available um, only for another couple of months to, to the workers, but it's a start. Um, there needs to be um, supervision and support um, of the workers from the consumer perspective. So obviously they'll have managers that are clinical staff, but um, they also need to have a space within our own discipline of consumer perspective um, to work and reflect on, on the work that they do. So that's what I mean by mm. That, that's the sort of thing I mean by infrastructure. Yeah. Okay, so having hit you with all those questions before you've even been able to go in a mingle, um, tonight, what's that about? Um, tonight's really an opportunity to celebrate what we have gained in the, in the 20 years. Uh, one of the things that um, I've noted in the time that I've been um, in the workforce is that there has in the past been specific awards for consumers in amongst other sort of health service awards. Um, and in the last five years, they've really dropped off. So there is isn't there is no longer specific awards for Why consumers in health service awards. Um, because I think they that part of the, the um, argument is that consumer participation and consumer perspective should be embedded in everything. Mm -hmm. And while that's an honourable um, goal, it actually isn't the reality at the moment. So uh, Vimiac thought that we would um, take this opportunity of being the 20th anniversary um, to honour that work and to really celebrate that work. I'm, I'm a strong believer in, in things like rites of passage and really um, celebrating things when, um, when yeah, so, um, so that's why we're doing it, just as a celebration. Fantastic. And hopefully many more um, award years to come. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much. Now I'm just going to get you to just stay because my thing doesn't want to close down for the moment.